Hey, what's going on, Chris? How you doing, man? Good, buddy. How are you? I'm doing real good, man. I appreciate you joining us, man. Now, I don't know if you remember, but you remember back in 2005, I promoted a, a boxing match with Butterbean. He was my main event. You guys were the VIP to my show in Jackson, Mississippi. I remember that. I don't, I don't think that I actually went to the to the fight, but I met Butterbean afterwards, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah, because Brad... It was, it, was Todd, it was Todd Brad and Matt that went. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. Man, well, look, man, a lot of really cool stuff going on with the band, man. Three Doors Down. Uh, March 11th, you guys will be releasing... Uh, much anticipated six record, Us and the Night. Talk about the new CD, man. What's going on? Well, it's been a, it's been a, a two-year process kind of putting it together. I mean, we've got new members in the band. Um, you know, because Matt, of course, he, he he dipped out, and then Todd did the same yeah. uh, a little while later. Um, for You know, everybody knows the reasons he left. Yeah. And, um, so we had to kind of regroup a bit, man. And, you know, it was like a one-two punch, like a... You know, Matt left, and that was you know, that was tough. And we had to regroup a little bit, and then then and then Todd left, and then that was a uh, um, that was tough. We had to regroup again, and hire another person, and just kind of and everyone had to learn the ropes again, and we had to do all the whole thing. But you know, we did what we had to do. Absolutely. Well, the fans are excited, man. I was just checking out YouTube. And um, the the in the dark video already has close to sixty thousand views, man. So that's exciting. Well, I'm hoping it's your, I'm hoping it's y'all's account. It says three doors down under the YouTube account. I'm I'm hoping it's y'all's official. Yeah, it, it should be. It should be. I just didn't know it was up. I've been I've been doing meetings for the last two days, so I've been kind of out of the loop. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the official three doors down. Um, it's not the video. I don't know. I mean, it's not a video. It's just the audio track. It's the lyric video. Oh yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It's almost sixty thousand views, and it's only been up about a week. So that's that's really good. That's cool. All right, so talk about Us in the Night, um, the title. Um, what was the thinking behind the title of the record? Well, it was really kind of just a, just a snapshot of where we were at at the time. You know, if you think about it, losing two members, putting two new members in the band, you know, having had a record out in a while, and then having to regroup and having to kind of go back and, and almost reform, it was um, that's kind of where we were, you know? It was like Us in, us in the Night, mm -hmm. Us in the Night. We were kind of surrounded by darkness there for a while, and that's kind of how the... The premise of the name came up because of that, and then and then also the song itself. Um, it, it's really both of them are kind of you know kind of work hand in hand, and, and where the band was at at the time. Yeah, good stuff. Um, do you have any favorite songs on the record? Any any songs that you really think will do? You know, really kick ass stuff. Uh, I mean, maybe radio play. You know, yeah, I love the single. The single in the dark is already you know, yeah. in the top ten after the, after the first week. So I'm really excited about that, and uh, yeah, I'm just excited about about I don't want to know. I mean, that's a different flavor song for what for what people are used to hearing from us, and uh, I think it shows not maybe not you know musicianship growth per se, but just attitude growth and just you know the fact that um, the fact that we're a, we're a changing band that it's kind of you know, rising with the times, if you will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what, though, I was, was going to ask this question a little bit later in the interview, but you kind of you kind of touched on it. One of the things that your fans and I've been a fan of you guys for forever, ever since the beginning. I, I live in Mississippi, um, so I go all the way back to y'all's beginning days. Um, but one of the things the fans really appreciate about Three Doors Down, even though you had a couple member changes in the band, but y'all never sold out. You never, y'all, y'all always have the same. Your music got better and better and better, but it was you never changed up the the flavor of the music. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, you know we we've uh, we've talked about that, and people have actually asked us why we didn't. We never really kind of did that. Uh, we never went with the times, and and, and the reason is that uh, that's not who we are, man. Like, right. You know, we're a band from Mississippi, and even the, the new guys, even the new members. I mean, one of them from. You know, Asheville, North Carolina, and the other one's from Tennessee, from Nashville. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're country boys, too. And, and they kind of get right in with the with the logic, you know, to kind of line right up with it. So, it worked out pretty good. Absolutely, man. I'm excited. Uh, the song, the, yeah, the, like you said, Us in the Night's an awesome song. I've already listened to it like 20 times on YouTube. And um, we'll be oh, purchasing, thanks. I'll be definitely purchasing the record. Um, all right, so I see you guys. I checked out y'all's. Y'all tour schedule and you're all, you're currently playing some shows in fact you got a couple coming up in mississippi if i saw that right will you be adding any further yeah. any more dates once this record drops oh yeah definitely we're 
we're doing. We're, we're trying to put together a, a July, you know, starting in July tour. Now there'll be some Europe stuff, hopefully some South American dates, um, some dates in Asia. You know, we we, we travel, we play. So oh, yeah. we're gonna go and, and do it. Okay, that's great news. Man, you've been with the band a long time. I think you would think you jumped. I think you were, if not one of the originals, right a couple of years after Brad. Maybe was it maybe ninety eight? Was that when you was you hooked up? And was it back in ninety eight? No, it was like ninety ninety six. Ninety six. Ninety six is when I joined the band. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you ever imagine that today you guys would have sold over twenty million freaking records? You know, it's hard to imagine that. I mean, that's a, that's really a hard. Uh, I mean, even when we started, the, the environment was a lot different than it is now. People only really sell records like they used to, but even in the environment that we started in, 20 million records is a lot of records. You ain't lying. You know, <laughs> and, and, and definitely didn't think that we would ever, you know, that we'd be doing that. I thought, you know, I thought we'd go out and have a little mild success. We'd fly tour for a couple of years and be back home because all the bands that we, all the bands that we played with that came through the Biloxi area, you know, with the exception of Creed, that's what happened. You know what I mean? We yeah. have a lot of bands that you'd hear from them, you'd hear about them for a year or two, and then you'd never hear about them again. And that's what I thought we would be, I thought that was kind of how it worked, you know? Yeah. What was so, it? But it obviously doesn't if you get lucky. Yeah, you know, and, and, and there is some, uh, there is some truth to that because there's a lot of bands out there that are freaking super bands, are awesome, that never never achieved some of the success of like you guys and some other bands. But that doesn't mean they're any less talented. They just weren't in the right spot at the right time, maybe. And do you attribute a lot of that to success to me? I mean, obviously y'all's talent songwriting speaks for itself. But do you, but do you attribute a little luck, a little luck in there also to where you've gotten to where you have now? You have to have the same amount of luck as you have talent. That's the thing about it. I mean, talent yeah. is one thing, but without luck of the draw and, and the right people hearing it and the right people getting behind it and the right team in place and the right label and the right all this stuff. Yeah. The, dude, the sound of the moon really has to line up and you have to be radio darling and you have to be all these different things that, that you have to be and you have to be them all at the same time and you don't really know what they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like there's a book out there where you can be like, okay, chapter two says now we have to be like this. You know, you don't know what what you have to be until you get in that situation. It's a lot of luck, man, and yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of timing, if you will. Sure, absolutely, I agree. Now, when you guys wrote Kryptonite, I mean, it's still one of my favorite songs. All these years later, every time I hear that, I I, I actually got a speeding ticket one time because of that song. I swear to God, it's the truth. Uh, nice. Yep, Brandon, Brandon, Mississippi. I got pulled over because I was speeding because that song popped on. Um, when you guys wrote that song. I mean, when I first heard it, I was like, "Whoa, that's so freaking cool!" Did you did you have a feeling that one that was going to be the one that got you to recognize? Yeah, without a doubt. And, and um, when you write a song like that and you hear it for the first time, you have a you get a special feeling inside your stomach. And that was before we were signed. That was before like yep. we even had anything on the radio. And we all like we all knew. We all said that. Look, if they're playing the stuff that they're playing on the radio now, why wouldn't they play this? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't this be a successful track? And it was so funny because we said that to each other many times, and, and as a matter of fact. And then when we finally did finally get it played on WCPR, just what we thought would happen, happened. It went straight from, from never getting played on the radio to you hearing it three or four times a day. And, and that was because, number one, CPR was gracious enough to play it. Mm -hmm. And number two, it, was, it, was a, it, it turned out to be a pretty cool song, you know, so... We were really lucky in that respect. I mean, without without that first radio station coming and going to bat for us, we would have been, you know, we would have been dead in the water. And that's the song you pitched when they flew you guys up to New York for the for the for the signing for the record signing, right? Actually, we didn't pitch it at all, man. Um, the radio station pitched. They started playing it. Um, they started playing it probably a month, maybe two months before we ever met with the record company. They uh, they played it on their station, CWCPR in Biloxi, and it went. You know, into the top ten first, and they're yeah. a BDS reporting station. So they they sent their report out. Ah, okay. And the record the record label saw that report, and they saw you know three doors down Kryptonite, top ten, no label because they always put the label label <laughs> on that BDS report. Okay. And they saw the fact that we didn't have a label, and as soon as that BDS report went out, it was like a mad dash for three doors down. Everyone came at the same time. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, Experience. I can imagine. No label. Everybody was must have been like, "Wow, how how are these guys not signed?" After that song, <laughs> and they made a mad dash to sign us, and, uh, and of course we, we chose Universal Republic. So 
Yeah, good stuff. And then, and then the rest is in the history books. And you guys went on to play global tours, stadiums. Um, you know, w w when you look back, w w would you rather play the big stadiums, or do you get some equal satisfaction out of playing some of the smaller venues um, for more of that hometown kind of feel? W which one would you rather do? Man, it really doesn't matter. I mean, it's all about the vibe and, and about the crowd. I mean, there's some big, there's big, we play some big shows that have been off the chain and been great. We played, you know, for 15 people in places, and, yeah. and it's just as cool. I mean, it really doesn't, I mean, the size, the crowd, the crowd size doesn't matter. It's all about the particular show, and each one is different, you know. You play so many, we play 300, a year, 300 shows a year for the first five years, and then, you know, now we're, we don't play that many anymore, but we're, you know, we're still playing mm -hmm. 200 shows a year for the last 20 years. I mean, do the math. Yeah, man. It's a lot of shows, and um, we, uh, so I've seen a lot of them, and, and, and they're all different. Each show's different. Each show's unique, and it's a lot of fun. You have to go with some bad ones, but you know, I would say, if, if I had to answer that question directly, I would say probably some of the smaller ones are my favorite because it feels like less pressure. Mm -hmm. you're, able, you're able to more live in the moment than, than if you're sitting there looking at 100,000 people. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, too. Um, two more things, and I'll let you go because I know we're, we're pressed up against some time. Um, what's been the highlight? Looking back at your career, man, from the from the kryptonite to now, what's been the highlight of your career and the band's career? Just the touring and the traveling. I mean, that's definitely been, and just the experience of, of that and living that lifestyle and, and doing it for a living has is, is been the highlight. And it's really been a combination of many, 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 many things. But just all, all together, that's been it. Good stuff. The last thing I got for you, man, you guys have been involved with the uh, the Better Life Foundation. I'm pretty sure it's the foundation y'all created, if I'm, if I'm wrong, just correct we me. Did. Yeah, I figured that was the no, case. We, we, we created it, yeah. We yep, did. yep. Um, it's, it's, it's done some wonderful things, and the band has a history of doing great things for the troops and for all kinds of people. So if you would, just talk about the Better Life Foundation. Well, it's a foundation we started in response to a, a, a charity show we played years and years and years ago. For someone else that asked to come, you know, and donate our time and play, and we we uh, we asked to see the books afterwards because it was a sold out arena show, and we asked to see how much money they made for the charity, and we were shocked at the amount of money that actually made it to the charity, and we were like, you know what, never again do we ever play another show like that. We don't, but we wanted to do charity work, but we didn't want to play it for someone else to make money. Right, the charities to make money. So we started our own foundation in response to that. And it's a dollar in, dollar out foundation. I mean, we don't have we don't have a payroll for anybody. We have one cell phone bill, or maybe two at this point. Two cell phone bills, and everyone donates their time. All the bands included. Um, and we we do a show every year. We have been doing it in the past in Tunica, Mississippi, but we're getting ready to, you know, that's getting ready to be up. Uh, something's getting ready to happen. We're going to be announcing really soon. I don't want to say anything just yet. But okay. We're getting ready to announce something really cool um, with with the Better Life Foundation show next year, but. Um, we do a big show every year. We invite bands to play. Last year we had Jamie Johnson in the past. We've had Leonard Skinner. Uh, we've had Shinedown. We've had uh, Alter nice. Bridge. We've had oh, Blackstone Cherry. We had, let's see, who else do we have? We have we've had Deer of the Dead Man. We had Stained one year. You know, we had Daughtry the year before that. And, um, you know, so it's been, a, it's been an ongoing thing. And, and uh, this next year will be our 12th year. Uh, and, uh, and every year it grows a, lot, a little bit more. We make a little bit more money. And we donate every penny of the money that we make to women and children's charities specifically, mm. but more more women more children's charities than anything else. Children's hospitals and Fantastic. like that. that we're, we're, people typically won't give to a children's hospital unless they have a sick child. Right. You know. So we just said, you know what? We, you know, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make this our priority. And uh, we've been able to, we've been able to branch out into some natural disasters and things like that. We've made a little bit extra money here and there, been able to help. You know, some earthquake victims and, and the tsunami victims and, you know. That's also, a Hurricane Katrina. Can. You guys helped out with Hurricane Katrina as well, if I read that right. Oh, we, we absolutely did. Yeah, we, yeah. Bought, uh, we bought three police cars and a fire truck from Waveland. Yeah, man. They lost, their, they lost their whole infrastructure. Yeah, almost got wiped off, literally wiped off the map down there in Waveland, yeah. Mississippi. Man, yeah. That was terrible. Man, look, man, I appreciate you coming on board. I'm real excited about this new record. Um, tell the fans, again, uh, where they can get it. I'm sure iTunes, but, you know, and also t touch on the band, social networks, um, any information that we can, you know, connect the fans with buying this record. Um, well, the record comes out March 11th right now, and if you download the single from iTunes, you pre-order the whole record, they give you the single. Um, so you can go ahead and start listening to End of Dark. 
Um, but it'll be released worldwide and all that. You know, all the outlets, Walmart's and Target and, and Best Buy's and all that stuff um, on March the 11th. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. There it is, man. Well, Chris Henderson from Three Doors Down, I appreciate you joining us. I look forward to a follow-up. Maybe I can catch you guys on the road when you guys come through uh, Biloxi next time. Absolutely, man. We'll be there in April.